Okay, we're recording. Okay, three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 117, titled Encrypt All the Things, because we're going to encrypt a lot of things. I don't know how much we're going to end up encrypting, but we're going to say we encrypted all the things, because Tom's going to tell us what we haven't encrypted yet. Well, I've been working on encrypting my car. Uh, I got through about half of the ECUs in my car. They're now completely encrypted using a 4096-bit RSA key. So I've got some public key encryption. But when I stick my car key in my car now, it doesn't work. So I think there's something going on there, maybe with the signing. Um, yeah, I probably shouldn't have done a you know, a Derek's boot and nuke and all the ECUs before I encrypted it. But, you know, what can you do? Well, let's talk about yesterday. This is going to be more general tech at this point. Google had their their big show yesterday, Google I.O. 2016, and announced all the things. And pre-show, we're talking about, wow, it's great. It's all this and that, but we don't have high hopes for all of this. We want to succeed, but I don't think so. Yeah, so basically we have Google launched yet another messaging platform uh, because, you know, you can't have too many of those around and not too many of them have failed yet, um, called Allo, A-L-L-O. Um, and the big news uh, that comes out of this, uh, and actually big news that came out of uh, Whisper Systems, is that Allo will optionally use uh, the signal protocol, which means great, awesome, battle-tested end-to-end encryption. The downside is this only happens in off-the-record mode. By default, Google can still read everything you put in that app unless you switch to the end-to-end encrypted version. Uh, and it's it's really unfortunate because I think Google had an opportunity to do something uh, right here. And... It's okay. I mean, I'm glad that option exists, but the fact that it's not enabled by default means no one will use it. Uh, it's the tyranny of the default, as you know, all the tech people love to say. So for the moment, stick to Signal, stick to WhatsApp. I, I'm going to let Allo pass me by. See, so this is how I use Hangouts with my wife. So my wife is normal person, doesn't cares about secrets and cares about encryption, but doesn't care to do much about it in that sense. So Every once in a while, because when you're married, you have to share accounts, you get the, oh, I need the last four of your social. Okay, the last four of your social is a royal pain in the neck to share all the time. So I call my wife up. I don't get her on the phone. So now I have to send her a message. So I send her a Google Hangout. This is where I think this will succeed. Not that it's right, but this is where it succeeds. People know that there's normal browsing and then there's incognito mode. And they go to incognito mode when they want to do something, whatever. But we have to remind you that incognito mode is not just, it doesn't hide anything. It just hides your history for that browser session. Google still gets, well, Google doesn't get it, but your ISP knows about it. But everyone knows you want to do something that you don't want to remember, you go to incognito mode. So you're doing your normal day-to-day things. You want to use all this stuff. You're in the one tab. If you want to send the last four digits of your social security number to your spouse, you go to the other tab. That's my only devil's advocate play here. And I don't know if that's the... Maybe they're using it for the bots. So on the other tab, the the encrypted in the tunnel tab, you can use bots. And you can say, hey, tell me a joke or where's the closest restaurant or all these, as Tom called them, IRC bots. But in the incognito, you get nothing. Yeah, which I, I don't understand why that couldn't be end-to-end encrypted. I mean, Google's chatbot could certainly have a key. Um do so you want to share your key with uh, with the chatbot? I mean, it's it's a public key, so it doesn't hurt anything. Um, I I personally wouldn't have an issue with it. Well, can we like? My problem is is that so you share it with the public bot. Can the government subpoena the public bot? Yeah, but because it's end to end encrypted, what that means is uh, yeah, they could subpoena Google. They could get all of your conversations with the chatbot. But frankly, if you're discussing terrorist plots with your chatbot buddies, controlled by Google, run on Google servers with your Google phone, um, you've probably got you know bigger issues in the IQ department. 
Well, so I mean, I I understand what they're doing. In the sense that, okay, they want to show you all these cool things. Oh, but if you want super super secret communication, go to the other side. I just wish that they found a way to make the whole side the one side. Yeah, I, I completely agree. There's absolutely no reason why the whole thing can't be end -end encrypted. But I, I've got a more general question. It's not really a security question. It's more of general tech weirdness. Why? on earth is Google building another chat app? They have a chat app. It's called Hangouts. It was called Google Talk before they, you know, spun both of them up and said, well, we don't really need Google Talk anymore, so we're just going to fold that in. I'm waiting for Allo to be the new thing, and they just take all my Hangout stuff and force me to use chat bots. I... Well, I do like the 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 quick responses because the quick responses in emails have been actually pretty good. Yeah, yeah. I I think the answer is, and because I deal with a lot of people who either have iPhones or the salesperson. This is what I hate: the salesperson at Verizon didn't explain to them fully that if you have an Android phone, your experience will be much better if you use everything Google. So they say, oh, yeah, you just you just need to make a Google account to log in. But that's really it. Oh, and we can just hit skip. So you can just skip everything and just use not Gmail, but the exchange Gmail to put your Yahoo mail. Oh, Hangouts, well, just use text message or use our crappy text message implementation. And you go from there. It's when people use their Gmail account and actively use it that Android becomes a whole lot better. Yeah, it's like if, if you own an iPhone, if you're part of the Apple ecosystem, it's going to be very beneficial for you to, you know, use the App Store, uh, use a Mac whenever you can, uh, you know, have a, a – is it still me.com? I mean, Apple keeps changing yeah. that over and over again. Have a me.com well, email that. address. It, but – and look, at least on iOS, you can go with whatever email. It's it's really independent on that end. But when you're on Android, to have Google, to have Gmail, to have to have Chrome being used and none of the carrier stuff, you're going to have a much better time and nobody explains that. So what happens is you go – you leave the store and, and now you have to tell everyone – which no one remembers, but everyone knows your text message number. Nothing changed. You didn't have to do anything. So you don't have to tell people that this is the way to communicate with you. You didn't have to tell them anything else. So I think the difference, people had this sour note with Hangouts and other things. So now they're going to say, you know what? We're going to go to a completely new app. It's probably going to be defaulted on N, and it's probably going to come with it pre-installed. And But it uses your phone number. So you can launch that. You can set that as your default text messaging solution. And you can say, if you text message, it's going to work there. It's going to be the iMessage, I think, of the Google platform, just like Hangouts was, but it's just going to use the phone number. Yeah, why don't they just build that in? I'm, I'm looking at the feature set of Allo, and the only thing I can think is that there is nothing here in this new application that couldn't have been built into Hangouts. They couldn't have rolled it in somewhere. I realize it's not completely security related, but think about the amount of time and effort they went through to completely revamp, completely build from the ground up a completely new chat application with end-to-end -end encryption in it. Why on earth wouldn't you just turn that on for Hangouts? I mean, Hangouts is originally built on Jabber, right? It's originally an open protocol that's designed to be extensible. Uh, it, that's the whole idea behind Jabber is you can add plugins to it to make it do weird, cool stuff. Why not just roll the signal protocol into that? It can't be that hard. I mean, this is Google we're talking about. If Google couldn't figure out how to, how to add it in, then... No one can. But I, I don't think that's the root issue. The root issue is, you know, Hangouts is old and stale and Allo and IRC bots are the new hotness because we have to rebuild everything and IRC bots are somehow cool again. So I, I don't know. I, I'm just kind of burnt out on, on new apps and new messengers and I'm an old man yelling at a cloud. Well, <laughs> yeah. Look, I... Again, I live most of my day – well, I used to live most of my day on a Chromebook, but I do live a lot of my time in Gmail and my work day in a Chromebook. So to have – if Allo is going to be – is going to replace Hangouts in the Chromebook-style way or they're going to find a way to make it there, then let's – I'm going to give it the – I'm going to give it the old college try. 
Be, but do you? But I'm telling you, I really like WhatsApp, and it's going to be hard to get people to move there. But so I'll be the one with the two system solution, the secure solution on a different platform, and Hangouts for everyone else. Yeah, I it, I got absolutely no one onto Signal, and that was really Signal's biggest issue was their complete lack of desktop client, and then the lackluster. Well, we have it now, but it's a Chrome app, so. Have fun. Uh, I mean, yeah, most people use Chrome, but that's just a really lackluster solution. That's not great. And WhatsApp had a nice, clean implementation. It was polished through and through. Uh, that's why I maintain that Signal, uh, the application, is really just a reference application for how you build secure messaging platforms. Uh, and, you know, I'm sure Hello is not going to be all bad. I'm just confused at why it exists in the first place. Again, if you're on an iPhone, you're going to be using iMessage, and that's the end of it. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's it. it. Okay, and that's not terrible, yeah. Because look, it, it is encrypted. It's not. It's tunnel encrypted. Apple, I think. Well, they claim they don't have the keys, so we'll we'll hold them to that that they don't have it. But that if if then you may you may install WhatsApp for something else. That's about it. You're not going to install anything else. But what I'm hoping for is now with this phone number idea, you may get a little more buy-in, just a little, not much, but you may get a little more. And I think that's what Google is hoping for. So, but the other problem, and you're going to, you're going to explain this to me is that a phone number is not the best identifier. It it basically identifies you and you probably don't want that if you're trying to be full on secure. Right, right. I mean, and WhatsApp has this problem. Many messengers have this problem. Signal uh, has this problem. Uh, But there are ways to circumvent it. You know, a phone number really ties you to you. And the Signal protocol does not protect metadata uh, at all. Um, They're just protecting the contents, which is great. That's a huge, huge deal. I don't want to undermine that. But uh, the metadata is really the important thing that law enforcement looks at. They look at, you know, this person, talk to this person, talk to this person, talk to this person. And that's where they get most of their information. They can't see what you're talking about, uh, but they know the people you frequently collaborate and communicate with, uh, which is enough for them to get suspicious if it's warranted. And And I wish there was a way to to tell signal i don't want a phone number so you can either message my phone number or you can message something else yeah. you have multiple accounts which i kind of also want yeah i'm i'm not sure why a username is a bad thing um i don't know why that's so that. hard to do i think that if you're in the username category you're smart enough to be able to change the default around and say you know when you have the phone number when you have the phone number issue I don't want to use my phone number. Have that option. I don't want to use a phone number. Use my username instead. And then you have to go through some. I would make it a difficult process to explain to somebody. People are expecting a phone number. But if you don't want it, we'll either create you a fake number. I mean, let them make it a 10-digit fake number or use a username. But that's on you to get people to use it. Yeah. it's. I realize it's it's yet another account, yet another big tree. Oh number and they send you a code to verify is really one of the easier sign up processes around. Um, I, but, you know, I don't want my phone number, number everywhere. Uh, you know, right now in our WhatsApp group, which is great and you should totally join it if you haven't, by the way, uh, you know, we've got a lot of phone numbers floating around there. And I'm sure most people are using a real phone number that they can really be reached at. You know, spoiler, you could call me if you wanted to if you were in that group. Uh, that said, I mean, there's a little phone icon on WhatsApp, so you could really call all of us if you wanted to. Um, but I don't like sharing that information. I mean, it's a Google Voice number, so I could easily just block people. But I would much rather use a username in that circumstance. At least with WhatsApp compared to Signal, is WhatsApp has the person's name associated with it on the side, which is a nice convenient touch, but not all that secure if you really just wanted to be a group of phone numbers right or well i guess this doesn't help i was going to say maybe to sign up for whatsapp because they need to verify that you are you to have that but then use a username from then on 
I guess that's a cheap, easy way to control spam. uh, Because, you know, generating random phone numbers is um, an order of magnitude harder than generating random usernames. You can still do it, but you've got to go through a few hoops. So th- let's move on to Duo. That's their uh, their that's their photo app, their photo, their video app. And I was watching it uh, at work, and one of my students said, "So you can call somebody, and it's going to automatically turn on your camera." I said, "No, no, you got it backwards. When you initiate the call, your camera turns on." And he goes, "I still don't want that because what happens if I butt dial?" Or if I'm not in a place where I accidentally hit something and now my photo is being shared. So what it is is basically you hit the button to call somebody to FaceTime or to video chat to Skype, whatever. And as soon as you hit that call, your camera, your camera, the person initiate the call's camera turns on. So the person can sort of screen the call to see who it is, which on my end, I like a lot. But from a security end, I have a feeling that this is going to call a butt dialing people people are prone to that are not going to want it i again it's not this isn't a directly security related argument that i have against it but why (laughs) i feel like you know like an old person trying to have snapchat explained to them i i don't understand why this is a thing you know what i when someone calls me using hangouts or whatsapp they're profile picture pops up in their name when someone calls me from the phone their profile picture and their name pops up when someone calls me on skype their profile picture and their name pops up i don't need to see them like moving and smiling or making a weird face or getting annoyed that i won't pick up the phone this just seems like literally an app just designed around a feature that could have been included in literally anything else i think the issue is is that video chat on Hangouts has not been doing well. It's it, it. This is how it starts. My sister's in Israel right now. She calls me up and it fails. So then I call her back and the video chat fails. And then we both give up and we just start texting or hangouting, whatever it is. And she goes, how come this doesn't work? And they didn't mention that on stage. We've heard that it doesn't work. This new app duo is going to be much better. And I will tell you, Hangouts on what well, was Google Plus, but Hangout Chat Now, when we used to record, was just so massively huge. It would spin up the fans. It took a lot of resources. It froze a lot. Skype was perfect for that. And then we're moving to Blab because Blab just works. It's so simple. Turn yeah, on the camera and show easy. it. And it records it and it sends it to you. But and I got it. Hangouts, but, Hangouts isn't federated. It's not like they have to keep up with the Joneses. They already said, hey, by the way, uh, Hangouts and XMPP, uh, they had kind of a fight and they're no longer friends. So they're not talking to each other anymore. We're going to shut down those servers here soon. I'm not sure if they actually went through with that. But they announced that Hangouts was now a closed platform. Why can't you take you know, your horrible, awful, inefficient video codec get rid of it, rewrite the thing, and then come out with, you know, Hangouts 10.0 or, or you know, Hangouts X or give it, like, some cool upgrade name. Uh, Hangouts 10, now with Cortana. Um, <laughs> you know, there's no Skip reason. Skip version 9. <laughs> Skip version 9. Yeah. There's there's no reason at all to, to build a completely new app around feature improvements. But I feel like Google had to do it because people just don't care anymore. And unless it's new and shiny, they're not going to install it. So you don't watch all these renovation shows where some guru comes into a, a, a business and and in three days fixes all their problems. But oh, usually if – are great. What? But they're taking an existing property and making it better. They don't bulldoze the building and construct a new building in its place. But no, that's not what I'm getting at. So they then they show them the reviews. So I'm I'm talking about a hotel show where then they read the reviews. T- terrible, this, that. And then at the end they go, I want to change the name. And it's met with argument. No, but I like the name generic motel in. And they're like, no, no, but if you change the name, you can start fresh and all those bad reviews go away. And they're like, no, but I like the name. And he's like, this is your problem. Just change the name. And then they change it. And they're like, wow, all these bad things went away. So I, I have a feeling that's maybe where they're getting some of the idea. But like you said, I don't want to download another app. 
that means more people that I got on Hangouts to talk to me are now going to have to download something else. But whatever. But yeah, the, the Signal protocol, that's interesting. We'll have to see what Google does with it. Uh, I'm kind of hoping it doesn't end up like their other end-to-end encryption product, which, by the way, we did talk about on the show a while ago, uh, Gmail's end-to-end encryption Google extension, Chrome extension. Um, and it just died, it seems. Like, it, it's still active on GitHub. They did move it from Google Code to GitHub. There are still commits happening, but it has been absolutely silent, and I have no idea what the status of the project is. It's when you were talking at the beginning of the show about the inc- when were you talking about the incestuous relationship in Silicon Valley? Was that the pre show? Yeah, yeah. I just, was gonna say, oh, so so if you watched that line, was directly quoted in the last episode of Silicon Valley, where the 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 Hooli CEO, not just let's just call them Hooli says we're tired of this incestuous silicon valley relationship and we're going to bring new blood in and turns wow. out they the problem I've never is even seen that show the problem is the new blood and i don't think this is a spoiler was a company that they fired 3 episodes ago and bought them again <laughs> i it, that's kind of amazing like i i've been saying that all day uh, when when talking about the I.O. stuff that's been happening and what Google's been coming out with, but I have literally never seen an episode of that show. So I... I, I Something want, in the air. Yeah, so... But that was always the problem with that Googlers had. They would dog food it on themselves, and they're all good and smart people, but when they put yeah. it out... And I'll give you another example. So if you've ever used Uber or Lyft, okay, you... There's no thing you want to find the fair estimate. I think that's the killer feature in both of those that and not having to talk to somebody and having the ability to call right from your phone. So you don't have to find the number and everything else. But you give it to my dad, and he always ends up calling an Uber just to get the fair estimate because you have to put the place in and then you have to say, pick, uh, put pickup location. So he pushes that and then you're supposed to swipe up, but it's not intuitive. So then the per, then you end up saying, uh, get request an uber and then you realize that and then you have to call the person and say i'm sorry and cancel so it's this we all figure it out except for the people who need to know how to use it and they just don't get it yeah it's it's an interesting hard problem but do you know what's not a hard problem anymore is ssl certificates for everyone (laughs) Heroku just announced, and uh, if you're not a developer, you probably don't know Heroku, but that's okay because a lot of big websites use them for hosting. Uh, Heroku just announced that uh, they will have free SSL certificates uh, available to the whole stack, the whole platform. So if you want it, enable it. It's not going to cost you a dime. Uh, Before, they were selling them at cost, which was, uh, I want to say, 20 bucks. Uh, It's either a year or a month. I realize it's a pretty big price difference, but uh, it did cost you some change uh, to to stand up SSL. Uh, Now, $0, encrypt all your stuff. Uh, It's all nice and automatic and beautiful. Uh, So that's great. Um, I don't know if they're using Let's Encrypt on the back end. Um, I looked around. I couldn't find any references to it, but... Um, you know, it's another project we need to give a shout out to is Let's Encrypt. Uh, the EFF has now taken uh, the Let's Encrypt automated installer thing, uh, renamed it to CertBot, uh, and it's now the under the EFF's control. Uh, it's still open source. It's still automatic. There's a lot of goodness there. So if you run a website, if you know a person that runs a website, uh, make sure they're using SSL. Even if it's something dumb, it just helps protect uh, protect people. Well- so my problem is, and the whole reason we started recently, me moving from my old host, is that my old host was selling SSL certs. So pick your generic, pick your big name hosting companies, whether you like them or not, pro- including the one that advertises on the Super Bowl every year. And the problem is they sell their own SSL certificates. So when I ask them, "Are you, do you have any plans? And they all say, oh, we're considering it, but we're not going there yet. So when we talk, we're saying WordPress. So if you had a WordPress.com site, it flipped 
to uh to https blogger flipped to https but if you're hosting like i was my own wordpress site it didn't flip because the company was trying to sell me their ssl cert which got me really annoyed i'm okay with putting a comparison chart with all the self-deprecating x's and check marks to say why ours is better but but we've all said that let's encrypt is this is this is this community wide ssl to get you ssl to be fairly confident that you're safe I don't know. Would you use SSL to sell people things, or would you use Let's Encrypt to sell people things on your site? Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's it, there's literally there there are two brands of certs right now. They're not really brands. They're they're just types. Um, there are domain validation certs and EV certs, and they are using the exact same encryption, the exact same protection, the exact same technology underneath. One is not stronger than the other. The the exact same thing. The only difference is EV certs take a long time to get and they're a hassle because people have to call you and interview you and make sure you are who you say you are. There's a lot of paperwork to go through. So if you're a bank and you want the green bar that says, you know, Bob's Bank of America here, um, then you need to get an EV cert. If you don't care and you just want the lock, you just want to, to be on an SSL site, literally any SSL certificate will do. And yeah, there are different types, like you can get wild cards or, or standard certs or just a cert for a specific set of domains. But literally the technology behind them is exactly the same. So if, you know, uh, Bob's Certificate Emporium and Super Mega Cert Corporation are trying to sell you certificates for different prices, uh, just know that at the end of the day, they're using the exact same technology underneath. And now... Let's Encrypt has come out and they said, hey, look, we'll give you domain validated certs for free. You don't have to do anything except use this little program or one of the many open source programs that people have built to give you Let's Encrypt certificates. But there has to be something that makes a DigiCert certificate more important than or more genuine. I don't want to say genuine, but something. It's just the name. The that same. is literally the, the only difference. People, okay. people know that they go to your site, they, they, if they even pay attention, which by the way, 99% of your users don't, if they go to your, your thing and they click the little lock and they say, oh, hey, look, um, this is secured by DigiCert. That's nice. It looks like he got, you know, uh, <laughs> he got charged $60 when he didn't have to. Um, if they go and they check and they see Let's Encrypt, they go, huh, that guy is pretty good with his money because he didn't have to pay for a certificate. Uh, and it's not really like that. But yeah, no one cares. They only see it if they go digging. Like in Chrome, it's two clicks. I've got to click on the lock and then I have to click on details. And then I've got to look at the security overview. And then it doesn't even show me on this page who the certs by. It just says it's valid. So I click view certificate. And here I can see that, you know, uh, Blab is secured by DigiCert. Which is awesome, by the way, that Blab is encrypted end to end. Yeah. For no other reason <laughs> that they're, we're publicly having a video conference, but yet it's encrypted. Yeah, why not? I mean, it doesn't hurt so. you. It doesn't cost anything. And for the people out there that say, oh, but SSL, if you terminate SSL, you're using so many CPU cycles and it'll slow down your server. No, no. Look, we don't live in the in the 1980s anymore. Okay, we've got some cycles to spare. SSL is fast. Uh, and there's been a lot of work going into optimizing that code. So SSL won't slow you down. As a matter of fact, in uh, many cases, it'll make your site faster for users. Because there's less of that, you know, in the middle inspection going on. So, but going back to, so my, my hosting company did not want to go the free SSL route. So I had to move everything over. And I think if enough people push, there'll be a way to say, well, if you want to buy one and we'll do the hard work, that's fine. But if you want to do the hard work, then go Let's Encrypt, which is not hard. I mean, it took me, I don't know, 30 seconds to do it. Yeah, it's it's really if, if, really. if you want to get your command line interface going, then then yes, it'll be free. Just like anything else, if you want to do it yourself, it's easy. It's it's hard work, but it's way cheaper than hiring someone to do it for you. And if you want to set up a blog and have it be SSL secured, but you don't want to go through the hard work, WordPress.com will host your stuff, and they have free SSL. And you also, paid blogger, also, yeah. So, I mean, that that's 
That's awesome. So we're obviously seeing encryption move forward. We're just hoping that it moves forward in obvious in the right ways and more people take advantage of it. Yeah. For now, I would say I'm gonna go with Snowden's recommendation to avoid Allo until they uh, they turn on encryption and end encryption by default. Now the stuff is still going through SSL, so it's not like they're just throwing your data to the wind. But you know, Snowden's recommendation is use something more secure like WhatsApp or Signal for the time being. And I'd have to agree with that. So anyway, everyone, we're done at this point. So we will see you next week. Bye, see everyone. You, everyone.